Welcome. In this section, we're going to start with a new project and we're going to work with a database through an ORM, Object Relational Mapper. This will allow you to use a database without having extensive SQL knowledge, although that stuff is useful to know. And we talked a lot about it in the previous sections. But if you just need to work with a database and you don't want to have to use SQL directly, an ORM is going to be your friend. Now, there are many ORMs out there and within Node, there exists at least three or four that I can think of. And it was hard to choose which one to use. I didn't want to teach all of them because I didn't feel like it would provide a lot of value, especially since the concept is pretty similar across all ORMs. So most likely if you learn one ORM, you should be able to figure out the others fairly easily if you end up having to use a different one. I ended up choosing Prisma for a few reasons. One, it has really good TypeScript support, and I'm gonna be using TypeScript for the rest of this course. And the other main reason is it has support for structured databases like Postgres, but also MongoDB. So since we're going to have a section talking about MongoDB, that might be something you want to pull into your project and use. You should be able to follow this course fairly easily, even if you end up using MongoDB instead of Postgres. MongoDB has its own ORM, Mongoose, which we're going to talk about as well, but we'll have much more extensive training on Prisma. A third reason I like Prisma is it keeps things really simple. It doesn't add a really complex data layer, so we can add it into our projects very easily, which is something I like. I like to keep things simple. I like to keep the total amount of code we write as little as possible so we can maintain it and build on that application easier. So here we are within a terminal. We've built a bunch of different projects and files throughout this course so far. We're going to create a new project though, so you don't have to have any of this prior code, which is nice if you just wanna jump into the ORM section. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a directory and we're going to build out an example with this of a forum. So we'll just call this forum backend with the idea you might wanna add a front end later. We will switch directories to this. Then we will initialize a node project. We will install some essential junk, so Prisma, TypeScript, types slash node, and these are going to be dev dependencies. Now that that's done, we'll initialize this as a TypeScript project with npx tsc init, and that'll create our TS config. So that's the general process for creating a project, but with Prisma, there's one additional step you're going to need to do, and that is npx Prisma init, and then we'll pass a data source provider and this is basically the database you want to use, which is PostgreSQL. When you issue this command, it will create a Prisma file for you. This is how you're going to define the structure of your database in a unique syntax. It's not SQL, it's not JavaScript. You could say it's a domain specific language potentially, but it's really not too bad. The learning curve is very light. Now I did want to mention that NPX allows us to issue some commands through packages installed in our project. So for example, npx prisma, and you can say dash dash version, and you can see we'll get a value 5.2. This is the latest version at the time of this recording. And I'm showing this because if you have certain packages installed globally, you might not need to use the npx command, but it might not work exactly the same way just because the versioning could be different or possible other things I'm unaware of. So it's probably best whenever you're issuing a Prisma command to do it through NPX. But just to show you that, since I have Prisma installed globally, I could say Prisma dash dash version. And you can see this responds with version 5.0. So the commands through Prisma may be different or some other weird stuff like that. So I just wanted to call that out. Make sure you prefix with NPX whenever you're doing Prisma stuff. So we initialized Prisma and it has a Prisma schema file, but we still need to connect to our database with a connection string. Let's open our project and I'll show you what to do next. So we're already in that directory forum backend. From within the project, you're already going to have a .env file. This was generated when we generated the Prisma stuff and it has an example connection string in here. So as a reminder, let's connect to Postgres. So I've been doing that with PSQL, passing in the user of Postgres and the host of localhost. And you can get more information with backslash connection info. So just con info. This gives us our local connection info. If you're working with a database in the cloud, you might need to go to that cloud provider to find all of this information. And then you'll want to know what database to work with with backslash L. And you can create a new database if you wish. So for example, I'm just going to drop database forum it's saying it's being accessed by other users. And that's probably just from my previous lessons. I was already connected to this database. So I'll close out of that connection with backslash Q. And now I'll try this again, drop database forum, that worked. And then create database 
forum. As for your password, well, to use PSQL, we didn't have to provide a password, so we can still get into this and then change the password with alter user, Postgres user with password, and then provide a new password. So yeah, I'm literally gonna make a new password. So let's use all this information to build out our connection string. So the user here is going to be Postgres. The random password is going to be new password. Then we'll keep it localhost. Let's scroll up to see our connection info. So port 5432, that looks good. Then the database, we're gonna call it forum. And then the schema public, you can keep that as is. You can use schemas to add additional organization, but I'm fine with using the public schema. And we'll save and we'll know if this is correct when we try to create a table. So now we'll move into the Prisma schema file. So it's schema.prisma and it will default to having Postgres in here. So you can see Postgres is the data source provider and there's other ones you can use. And then there's also this generator section. This will create a JavaScript client that we can use to interact with our database, but there are other generators we could use. For example, there are plenty of projects out there that take a Prisma schema and create other things such as a JSON schema. And you can scroll through this list. These are all like community created projects. So Zod creates Zod schemas for your Prisma models. We'll talk about Zod later. Generating entity relationship diagrams. There's a ton. There's also GraphQL. So if you're going to have a GraphQL endpoint, you might be able to use one of these tools. And you can see a lot of these mention GraphQL. So we'll start with the most basic example of creating a table to store user information. We'll define a model and call it user. Typically this will be singular and uppercase. And then we'll provide an ID to say what type it is, in this case, int. And you'll notice I'm getting some problem suggestions on how to fix it since we're not done. And we are also getting highlighting. This can all be done with an extension. So if you go to your extensions and search Prisma, you can see there is a Prisma extension. So you want to make sure you download this to get the best highlighting. There's a section in here for auto formatting. To automatically format on save, add the following to your settings.json, editor.format on save is true. So you can type this out or copy it and then open your settings. And then somewhere within this file, paste that property. I already have it in here, so you can see I have editor format on save true. So I will remove that. Now let's get back to our schema. To define a primary key, we will say ID and then give it a default value. Inside of parentheses, you will put a call to auto increment. So that is how you create a primary key. Now we'll define another column email. This will be a string and we will have the unique property on it. Now when we save, it's going to space it out so all the columns are in line, the data types, and any of the constraints you add to your columns. Let's add one more column in here. We'll call it username, and this will be a string, and it will be unique. Save, it'll reformat it so everything's in line. So we typed out a bunch of stuff in this file, but it doesn't automatically create a table. We have to issue a command, so we'll go to the terminal. If you want to keep the Postgres running, you can. We can just start another terminal and we'll say npx prisma migrate dev. And when you do this, it will ask for a name and we'll just say something like user. So what exactly did we just do? Well, a migration describes changes in your database over time. This allows you to continue developing and as your data structure changes, you can just create a new migration. Starting from the beginning, you could basically rebuild your data structure if you're starting on a new system. The migration will describe the exact changes to the data structure, and these go inside of a migrations folder. So you can see that here, migration.sql. So you can see in here, it creates a table called user with three columns, and it creates some indexes. Now the naming conventions are not exactly what we've been following for Postgres. We will talk about some of that soon, but the magic thing with ORMs is, it doesn't really matter. As long as it works in the software, you don't have to worry about what it is in the database. However, because it's a case you might still be working in the database, there are some capabilities to change the names or some of the conventions followed by Prisma. So we'll see that soon. You also notice the data type for the primary key is serial. This can also work. However, I've personally grown to prefer the identity, which is what we used when we were 
working with Postgres directly in SQL. But it doesn't really matter. The main thing is that this is what was applied to the database. And you can see your database is now in sync with your schema. So what that means is if we take a look at our database, we should be able to take a look at, uh, no tables. Probably need to change to the forum database and now take a look at the tables and we can see our user table created right there. Now I wanna talk a little bit more about creating the schema before we start working with actual data, but I just wanna show you one thing for completeness sake. First, you define your schema and create the migration. Then you will invoke npx prisma generate. And this is going to create code to interact with the database. And it'll show some instructions on how to get started. We're going to go through all of that process here soon, but I first want to take a stronger look at the schema file and how we can do more things. But I just wanted to show you that if you want to get started, all you got to do is import it and create a Prisma variable. And then you can say things like await prisma.user.create. But again, we're not going to get into that quite yet. So that was your introduction to Prisma. We still have a lot to learn. We're going to continue learning how to create more elaborate schemas. So stay tuned for the upcoming lessons.